Hello, I'm Dave Speakman. Welcome to the first lesson of my beginner guitar course. Now, these lessons are ideal for anybody who's new to the guitar and starting off, but they're also good for anybody who's not had formal training on the guitar, so maybe they can't read rhythms and things like this. This would be a good introduction into reading rhythms for you as well. So it's either for the beginner who's just starting or for an intermediate player with, with little formal training really. So cool. We're going to need to know, for, for today's lesson, we're going to need to know the chords E, A and D. And we looked at this in a lesson that I did last week about chord boxes and how to read chord boxes. So there's a link for that lesson here. You can download the sheet for this lesson from our website, which is davespeakman.co.uk. All of these sheets are free. You can share them, do what you want. I just, you know, ask that you kind of acknowledge where they came from, if that's cool. You're welcome to use them as you see fit. So we're gonna start by talking about what a time signature is. So the time signature is written at the start of a piece of music, and it tells us essentially how many beats are in each bar. And a bar is like a segment, the little segments that we see on the five lines. So in this first thing that we see here, we just have one bar written, and we can see at the start, we have this time signature and it says four, four. And that means that there are four crotchet beats in each bar. So the top number tells us how many beats there are, simple enough. The bottom number tells us the value of that beat. So in this instance, the value of the beat is crotchets or quarter notes. So four quarter notes. In exercise one, we're going to look at what a crotchet is then. So a crotchet lasts for one beat, so one count, essentially, if we're in 4-4 four, four time, which we are. So if I just clap crotchets for you, it's going to go like this. One, two, three, four. And they're crotchets, essentially, in one bar. If we have a double bar line, that symbolises that it's the end of a piece of music. That's how we know that it's the end of that tune. If we look at exercise two then, all we're gonna do is we're gonna strum. You can either use your thumb or you can use a pick. The way I'm holding a pick is that I, um, I put it on top of my first finger and then I just put my thumb down on top of it. It's pretty straightforward. To strum with your thumb, it's just a case of literally just strumming with your thumb. Or you could put your thumb and index finger together and strum like that. It doesn't really matter how you do it, um, lots of different people play the guitar in different ways. It's not a standardised instrument in the way that, say, a violin is, when there's just one way to hold a bow. Lots of different people hold their picks in different ways, so all I can do is show you the way that I do it. I understand why I do it. You have to kind of find what works for you, I think, to some extent. Generally speaking on the guitar, if we have four crotchets in a row, we're going to use four down strums on a row to play the chords. Okay, so it'd be literally like this. Okay. If we have a look at this next exercise, we've got the chord A, and we're just going to strum it four times, essentially, like this. That simple, yeah? So there's one down strum for each of those beats. And the little symbol for down strum is that little hat symbol that you saw before. That is how we know that it's a down strum. It's the same symbol that violinists use for a downstroke. We've just nabbed it from them. Next exercise, we're using the chord E, and we're going like this. Cool. Great. In exercise three on the sheet, we introduce the minim. So a minim lasts for two beats. It's essentially twice as long as a crotchet is. Again, the Americans call minims half notes. So a half note is twice as long as a quarter note. So if we're in 4-4, four, four, you can see that we have four crotchets in the first bar and then two minims in the second bar. So exercise three will sound like this. Exercise 3A, we're exploring the minims further. 
Here's exercise 3a. Are we ready? Cool. So in exercise four, we need to be able to change these chords quickly. Now, hopefully you've been doing the chord challenge that was mentioned in the lesson last week, where we change in between the two chords, take two chords and change between them quickly until we get that up to a decent speed. We also have these two dots at the end of the piece of music, which means that we're gonna to have to repeat this tune. Okay, so exercise four sounds like this. Great, so just play that along with me on that bit. If you can do it at the speed that I'm doing it at, that's cool, just move on from that. At this stage, you don't really need to be able to do it any quicker than that. We'll explore these chords a lot further in, in further videos. Cool, exercise five. The similar thing, really. Let's do it. In exercise six, we introduced the semi-breathe. So a semi-breathe lasts for four beats, and the Americans call these whole notes. Okay, so exercise six uses the semi-breathe. Let's have a look at that now. And you see how the semi have lasted for the whole bar there. We're going to finish up now with exercise seven. Please subscribe. There'll be new content every week. So move on to the next stuff. Thanks for watching. See you again next week when we move on to the next sheet. Next sheet's already on the website, so you can have a sneaky look if you want to. Okay, great. Thank you. Bye-bye.